All right, so today we have another electrical day. This is just minor upgrades. I'm gonna explain a couple things I just did last week um, and install this on-off switch. I got this over at West Marine. It's um, just an on-off switch for um, all the appliances in the camper, so there won't be a parasitic draw when I'm just parked up, not using it at all. So it'll just be a way to isolate everything off um, without taking the cushion off and hitting the breaker underneath the bench. So aside from that, I'm going to install a couple USB ports, um, a few lights here and there, one for the bathroom, one for up in the bunk, and that'll be about it. Yeah, I'll do some soldering to get the battery lugs on there, or the, the terminal ends on, and we'll just wire up a few things. I'll go over the monitor I installed and the um, smart relay for isolating my starter battery and my leisure batteries. So yeah, let's just get into it. So first off, I just installed this a few days ago. It's the Victron uh, Cyrex CT Intelligent Battery Relay. So it essentially detects the charge coming from the starter battery, that it's being charged, it knows the voltage, and then once that's topped off, it sends, I uh, tied it in here with a 2 watt wire all the way to my starter battery, feeds in here, and then it'll isolate or connect both batteries to charge or isolate it when the engine's not running so the um, these house batteries won't drain the starter battery. So yeah, it's a pretty pretty good system. This one you actually don't have to tap into your your vehicle's ignition or any uh, factory wiring. It's just these in and out for the positive that's uh, in or coming from the starter battery to here and then just just small lead to the battery and then a small ground that I have right over here in the fuse block. Um, and then you're good to go. So it detects voltage. You can also do a, um, uh, they do like a, you can wire in a push start. So you could actually use the your house batteries to start your vehicle if for whatever reason your starter battery does go flat. So you just push it and for 30 seconds it gives you enough time to run up and start the vehicle off these batteries. All right, so the other thing I installed was a um, battery monitor. So here's the shunt for that battery monitor. It's a knockoff of the Victron battery monitor. It's really, it's like a third of the price of that thing. And it does essentially everything you need, uh, minus the Bluetooth. So anyways, to, um, to wire it up, it's really basic. So I'm just running, you run your, your negative to the shunt on the uh, negative side for the battery, and then on the other side is all your negative loads. So I have my um, inverter right here, the uh, ground to the chassis. This is just the um, the wire for the monitor power harness. Plugs right into it. And then this is the ground for my fuse block. And then we have a small power coming to the fuse block just to light up the monitor. And that's it. And then it reads everything. Here is the monitor for that thing. So um, you can see I'm almost drawing one amp. And I have an LED strip on. And my LP detector, that kind of stuff's running. Uh, so the way you set it up is you make sure your batteries are fully topped off and then you program this to 100% and you also go to the amps and then you put in how many amps your battery system have. And then with that it, it detects everything going in and out and you can see that there's I'm only drawing amps out so there's a negative symbol here. But if I had the car running it would show that I was charging it so it would turn this to a positive and it would tell you how many amps you're drawing or bringing in for the charge. So yeah, it's really basic, it's simple, it, it's everything I need. So this is like a perfect setup for me. So we'll see how it, how it holds up. All right, also this is where my battery is, the starter battery. So this is the bench right up by the front seats and the dinette. So this is just the hatch for the battery. Comes right up and then you have your starter battery right there. And then this little door is your secret coolant fill door. Right in here there's a little hatch that pulls up and then there's a coolant fill. I made the mistake of boxing this in when I rebuilt it. So now I have a funny door. So anyways, what I'm over here for is I'm going to trip the breaker for the, um, this is the wire. Sorry, it's really dark, but this is, yeah, this is the cable. Coming from the starter battery to the house battery and I have a 200 amp breaker right here that I'm going to cut off to start working on the um, electrical stuff. And here is that 200 amp fuse I have 
run in, I guess the circuit breaker run in from the starter battery and then all the way underneath the chassis to the house batteries. All right, so now to get things started on today's job, I'm gonna use a larger wire to run from the battery to this 100 amp fuse and then to my shutoff switch, which I'm gonna mount right over here by the door. So I got pretty much, I think, just the right amount of wire. So I'm gonna measure it really, try to measure it really precise and then cut it up and uh, put some lugs on. Okay, I got the first cut measured out. So one of these ends is gonna go right into this after I strip the wire back a little bit, the housing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and solder a lug to fit onto the battery terminal. All right, so just to get a better idea on the exact amount of wire I need to cut the length, I'm gonna go ahead and just mount this in place and then I'll make it a little bit easier. I'm thinking about right about here. Okay, here goes nothing. need to get a better drill. Ooh. All right, well that's in there nice and flush. All right, so now to solder two terminal ends onto this wire. This will be the run from the off switch, on off switch, back to the fuse block. So we have two different size lugs, both eight gauge, but a three eighths and a five sixteenth, which was the smallest they had. I could have used the smaller size smaller, but it'll work. So the idea is just to strip down as much insulation so it'll fit down there nice and snug. And uh, we'll put the, um, put the lug right in here, heat it up, fill it with solder, jam the stripped wire in there, let it harden, slight crimp, and then we'll heat shrink it with nice marine heat shrink with adhesive on it. Yeah. Okay, right down there looks about good. Alright, he's a little bit of flux too. You don't want to heat it too, too much. I got one little strand out. Too bad. Didn't make too much of a mess. I'll be getting better as I go. This is like a couple of them in. Yeah, so with just the solder alone, this is like super duper solid. Just gonna do a little smash down crimp. Not much. Yeah, super solid. Just right up to the end of it with the uh, insulation. Cool. I am very happy with that one. Cool. It might be hard for you to see in there, but yeah, you see the two studs coming out of the back of the wall. It's the three-eight studs on the, the back of that on-off switch. So yeah, you just really lead it from the battery to this fuse 
down to that stud. That's the input, and then you lead another positive out back up to the fuse block. And then that just activates your on and off. All right, so the switch is really solid too. I got it bolted in through the bench. So yeah, it's in the off position. You really won't be able to see much, but yeah, it just really nice and smooth. Shuts everything off. That way I won't get excessive draw on my battery when it's not in use. So I'll turn it back on. You might hear the beep of the LP detection. Yeah, so everything's back in. So yeah, successful. Came out nice and clean. Alright, now the whole system looks much cleaner. It's a very functional system now. It's basic, but it's functional. So now I can go camping. We're going to go to a wedding this weekend in Vermont. So I wanted to get all this stuff done. So yeah, that's the relays done. The battery monitor shunts in and done. Now we have a proper on and off switch, so we can just turn it off if we're not going to be in here. And I got a better gauge wire and fused it. Well, it's already fused, but yeah, larger gauge wire. So, everything's ran a little bit cleaner. Eventually, I'll really clean this up and I'll do the solar and all that, but for now, very happy. Alright, so I wired up two different cigarette outlet 12 volt ports one here and then one up in the bunk. Alright, so we made it home nice and safe, uh, but what I want to go over one thing, and it's the exhaust brake. So that's the green light indicating you have turned on your exhaust brake, and what that does is traps engine pressure in the exhaust system, and then forcing the engine, the motor, to slow down, uh, called back pressure. So I had to look all this up. When I first uh, picked this up at the port uh, in New Jersey, I took the uh, Amtrak down and just drove it straight back up, and I knew absolutely nothing about it. And the first thing I did was accidentally hit this, and I saw that warning light pop up. And I was like, holy shit, what happened? So I pulled over and started translating the um, manual and then figured it out. But yeah, it's pretty cool. So the, the peaks in Vermont are super steep grades, like 12% grades. And the Elf was like flying down them. So it was really nice to be able to uh, put the exhaust brake on, downshift a little bit, and just kind of cruise down not riding the brakes really helps the whole braking system of the vehicle so but going up was a different story we were struggling uh, some of the peaks I was hitting hopefully 20 miles per hour you know how it goes cars piling up but uh, it was wonderful it was a great trip and that'll do it for this video so I really appreciate everybody watching especially if you made it to this point and uh, I'll see you on the next one